and hello everyone. Welcome to Viewpoint, a ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church. I'm Carlton Duck. So glad that you're with us on the program. Trust your heart. It's going to be blessed. Today we're dealing with conquering in Christ from Romans 8. I am so glad today we're not defeated. We may live in a world that seemingly is that condition. We may be going through trials and challenges in our life that sometimes we think we've been rendered defeated. But no, the Word of God says, Nay, in all these things you are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. We're going to be talking about that on Viewpoint today, and this is the ministry of Gethsemane Baptist Church here in Lynchburg, and we would love for you to come and experience Christmas at GBC. It is an awesome place to be, and your heart will just be blessed of the Lord. I just believe in such a glorious way. Please come by. Worship time is 9.30, 11.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. The church is beautifully decorated, very festive, and additionally, the people are excited about this great Christmas season. There's a lot of things going on here at GBC during the Christmas season. We've got Ugly Sweater Sunday. We've just got a host of things happening. We've got all kinds of neat programs that, uh, that are involving our children and blessing our children. That's inside. Outside, we have a great project that I believe is touching. It's going to touch many young hearts. We work with the Department of Social Services in a program that we call Cynthia's Dolls for Dolls. What we're doing in that program is that we're collecting baby dolls for little girls, action figures for little boys, and what a great blessing that is. Foster children, children that are coming from broken homes, broken relationships, going through times of adjustment. What better time than to give a little girl a beautiful baby doll that she can just find some encouragement in, a little boy, an action figure, and we're so delighted that uh, this is the second year we've been able to do this, and it is a great blessing because what it's doing is reaching in that community and letting people know that we, the children of God, Christians, genuinely care for other people children especially. The program started last year. My wife went to be with the Lord four years ago, and she was a master doll maker, and she loved children. And we just thought as a tribute to her life and her love for dolls and kids, that it was a great way for us to be involved in the community. You too can be involved in this great project. If you have little baby dolls for girls, new ones, of course, or the action figures for boys, please get in touch with me, and we would certainly appreciate your help. We appreciate everyone who's standing with us to bless others, and especially during the season of Christmas. Let's talk today about God's Word and, uh, and realize today that in Christ, we're not defeated. That doesn't mean that we don't have problems. That doesn't mean that we don't have challenges. That doesn't mean that we don't go through times of difficulty in our life. But it also means today that we have a God who's with and for us. When we get to Romans 8, we realize some things that the final word in this chapter, that uh, there's great encouragement, and there is a majestic portion of Scripture in the Bible that just radiates a promise from God. And certainly in these days in which we're living, we need the promises to lean upon to reside in, and to believe upon. You know, uh, I believe that this is something today. God, this is a declaration. Let's put it this way. What Paul is giving us here is a declaration from God to our hearts that will encourage and lift us up through the trials of life. Romans 8 begins with, of course, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. We've been talking about that some and certainly today, we must stand on that promise today. It's not a thought. It's not an idea. It's a promise from God that if your sins are confessed and your sins are forgiven, your sins are forgotten. Therefore, in Christ, in salvation, that condemnation is lifted. Now, for those of you who may think, well, I can lose my salvation. No, you can't. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ. How did you remove yourself from Christ? How did you get Christ then 
out of you? How did you extract him out of your being? You can't do it. I'm glad that the word says we're sealed unto the day of redemption. So realizing this, you know, we must understand that salvation is an act of God's grace. And in that salvation act, we have a promise from God. Today, I'm telling you, this is not something that you have to try to explain. It's something that you receive and praise God for. So you've got to understand today that God has made a commitment to you and I in salvation that for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Salvation was in God before uh, time began, and it will still be in God when time shall be no more. So today, salvation is not found in a priest or a rabbi or a church or a pastor or a people or a baptistry or good works or good deeds. What does Paul say in Ephesians 2, 89? For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So you've got to get today and realize this in your spirit. God is committed to our salvation. He has made the way. He has made the means. He has provided his son who died for us on the cross. Therefore, today, we realize that Christ has accomplished what we could not accomplish. But God is committed today not only to your salvation in providing it through his son, Jesus, but also today God is committed today in your growth in Christ. He wants you to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, as Peter talked about. And that growing process involves you being involved in the Word of God. It means you going to church. It means that you're fellowshipping with Christian people. It means that you're a praying person. And listen, these are not hard things to do. And you can enjoy the presence of God. Salvation is a permanent, permeating gift that God has given to us through His marvelous, glorious, wonderful grace that only He can provide. And thank God he's paid the price in full. As You're going to see some things today that it ends with the fact today that there's no separation. That's the way Romans 8 ends, that there's no separation. He talks about a list of things today that, uh, you know, could potentially separate us. But he said none of these can separate us from the love of Christ, which is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. There is not, listen... There is not a thing you can do to make God stop loving you. You can't do it. So salvation is that transforming experience that gives us that anchor upon the rock, and that rock is Jesus. The psalmist even said, when I'm overwhelmed, I go to the rock that is higher than I. Who is that? That's Jesus. And we're safe in his presence today. We we're opening the passage today, and we're going to uh, find that these scriptures really give us energy. It gives us passion. It gives us a promise that we can stand upon today. So let's just take a look at these scriptures for a moment. They're very familiar, and you maybe even know them by heart. And I'll just go ahead and read it to you. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, or famine, nakedness, pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul further said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a glorious promise we have there. So there are a few things in life today that we can place our full weight upon. And today you can place all your trust in the Lord. People may fail you. Circumstances may fail you. Health may fail you. Money will fail you. Family, friends, you name it. All will fail you. But I'm going to tell you what a friend we have in Jesus because he never fails us. And this is a great season of the year to remember that of what Christ came to do. The Word of God says, yes, he was born of Mary in Bethlehem's stable. And of course, we realize that he was the gift from heaven for salvation for all mankind. 
But also we must realize today that Jesus is not in a crib and he's not a baby in heaven today. He is exalted, glorious son of God. Because why did he come? The word of God says he came to seek and to save that which is lost. That means you and I. And I'm glad today they would call his name Jesus and he would save his people from their sins. And I'm glad today that there is an adequate amount of his grace to remove you from one of the clutches of sin that has you today bottled up. Today he can set you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So there's some things today you've got to remember. Even whatever you face, you can put your full trust in Jesus and you can know that he will never fail you. Why? Because he says, I will never leave nor forsake you. That's a promise that he's given us today. And we can put our weight in our relationship with Jesus Christ today. So how strong is the faith that binds you to the Lord Jesus Christ today? Is yours a shallow faith? Did you just get saved and that's kind of where you left it? It's more to it. You're missing the good living. Salvation surely secures us heaven, but that's not the only thing it does. It gives us help. It gives us hope. It gives us leadership and direction. And you know what? It will last. It'll take you through all the pressures and the trials and issues of life that you and I face. And that's exactly what Paul is telling us in these portions of Scripture. So today, we today can see indeed how he has made a way for you and I. And man, I'm glad that during this Christmas season, I'm glad I'm a part of that great family of God. I tell you, I just get so excited about the things of God, and especially during this Christmas season. I love the Christmas carols. I love the music. I love the, the festive decorations. You look at all those things and you can see an image of Christ in all of that, even in the Christmas tree. The Christmas tree here at GBC is what is called a Christmon tree. A Christmon tree is, and it has all the decorations, the ornaments on it, are Christian symbols, the cross, the Bible, the angels, different things of that nature. It is just beautiful, and we love our tree, and we just had a formal lighting of the tree on the 28th of November, and it was such a memorable occasion, and our church is just beautifully decorated. But in all those decorations, you can see a story of Jesus. Today, I want us to look at some things about who can separate us from the love of Christ. You know, today, I'm glad, and I can tell you there's nothing. If you wanted a summary of what I'm going to say, I would tell you there's nothing that can separate you from Him today. Nothing is possible to remove you today from the union, the walk, the relationship, the fellowship, the bond, the family membership that you have in Christ today. Nothing today can remove that. This is called eternal security. Praise God for it. I don't know why so many churches and religious groups today refute eternal security when it's a plain given fact in God's word. The only warning I have for you today is this. Just make sure that you have in your heart the Lord Jesus Christ today. Just not in your mind. Some folks, as the old saying goes, is going to miss heaven by about 12, 18 inches, the distance from your brain to your heart. You need Jesus in your heart. And if you'll confess with your sins and receive him into your heart, he will save you today. So genuine faith in Christ today, I guess we could say this is our focus or our theme. Genuine faith in Christ today overcomes all obstacles. What are you going through today? What are you facing? We all have struggles and trials, don't we? I have some, you have some. Who doesn't? It could be today in our physical being. It could be today in our relationships. It could be today in our families. It could be in our friendships, our relational issues, spiritual issues. A host of things, our physical nature. There's a lot of obstacles and things that we face. But I'm going to tell you, 
Nothing today can keep you. Genuine faith, genuine faith in Christ overcomes every obstacle. And that's a promise from God. Now, if you're a Christian, there's nothing to fear. I know that we're living in fearful times, and I understand that. But today, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And today, you're not living by the control of fear. If you do, then I'm going to tell you there's an absence of faith in your life in God. So let's look at some things. Genuine faith will overcome every circumstance that you will ever encounter, face in life. Paul gives us a list in verse 35 of seven things, and this is a biographical list, meaning the list of things that Paul had experienced, things he had gone through and he had faced. And he says, in every one of these circumstances, every one of these issues, one of these, every one of these obstacles, nothing could overcome the faith that I have in Christ. So in 2 Corinthians, Paul gives us a list of what he had faced. He had lived in persecution and problems. He'd been in areas of perplexities. He had uh, been shipwrecked, just a host of things that Paul had gone through. Circumstances, let's face a fact here. Circumstances are a part of life, aren't they? It's something that we go through, we face, and we encounter in life. We're not going to get by it. It's just a part of our living. But let me tell you something. In the midst of that is a God who will bring you through. So as circumstances being a part of life, as they were for Paul and as they are for you and I today, and realizing today Paul used terms like tribulation, distress, and persecution as terms to identify what he was going through. And tribulation maybe today implies being squeezed. And no, we will not go through the tribulation that is found in Revelation, but we do go through times of squeezing in our life and pressures that push us, and pressures come every day in life. Boy, I'll tell you what, just seems like here recently, there's been more and more of it in every direction that you could face. But we find persecution today that you face these struggles You've got to realize that just because you're a Christian and living by faith doesn't mean that you're exempt from them. But what do these do? The trying of your faith produces things in your life. It develops your character to be more like Christ. So Paul was saying there is no stress, there's no pressure, there's no persecution that can separate you from the love of Christ that is found in Jesus today. No stress can take you away from Christ. No problem today can defeat you. Today, you can put your faith to it. Apply your faith against it. And watch today your faith work and overcome that obstacle that you're going through. So Paul was going through. We have basic needs of life, as he did also. But, you know, that included famine, famine and nakedness and pearl and sword, food and clothing. Uh, you know, whatever. Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ that is found in, our, in the love of God today. So when the pressures come, your faith can withstand. Listen, I know many times we're looking for the door out in what we're in. And we agonize in prayer and we ask in the Lord to deliver us. And sometimes it seems like God just does not answer those prayers. But that doesn't mean today that he's not working. He is working. As a matter of fact, he works all things together for good to them that love him. And therefore today, he's going to bring good out of what you win. Stop looking for the door and start looking for the life lesson that God is trying to teach you in your faith walk with him today. Faith in Christ can withstand danger, it can withstand death, it can withstand, withstand anything that you will ever encounter in life, and you have a promise that God is with and for you today. What we have in Christ, I'm telling you, it is sufficient. Secondly, genuine faith today, it will overcome every suffering that you will encounter. Now, you can't build a life today 
like thinking life is nothing but one big Disney vacation and you're living in a fantasy world and oh, you're skipping through the tulips and you're thinking the sun is going to shine every day. You're living in a dream, friend, because that's not the way it is. I know that's suffering. We all have it, don't we? And it comes to us in different ways. You may have the physical suffering. You may have relational suffering. You may have spiritual suffering. You may have uh, just a host of things that can happen to you in a process, even suffering through the pains of life, of your physical body, or through a relationship, or through the loss of a uh, precious loved one. He's a man of sorrows, and he's acquainted with the grief that you and I go through. The suffering we face today is not new. It's a part of life, and I wish it wasn't, but it is. But one day it shall not be any longer. So it's, a, it's, it's no new thing for the Lord to permit his children to suffer. That may sound like a strange statement, that the Lord permits his children to suffer, but this is part, hear me, you may not understand this today if you're in something, but you will at some point in place. Suffering today is part of the Christian experience. Suffering is an intertwined relationship with God that he will shine through your suffering. Let me say that again. He will shine through your suffering. And even in suffering, you can stand on this track. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Paul said he loves us. And I'm glad greater love hath no man than this, that a man by the name of Jesus Christ would lay down his life for you and I, his friends today. The love was exhibited in the past. Jesus showed his love. He loved us. He condescended. He came down to this earth. He died on that cross. He took our suffering, our pain. And now we have a solution, praise God, to what we go through. It's a part of who we are. There's no utopia in this life. People might think there is, but there's not. Suffering is woven throughout the living that we encounter every day. And if you want to be united with Christ in love today, it's going to be woven in this fact of there is going to be suffering in life. But let me tell you what it is. It's temporary. It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. And thank God, suffering actually today walks us in a closer, dedicated, committed life with the Lord Jesus Christ. It puts you in a position that you're leaning more and more upon the Lord. And genuine faith can overcome any power that you face in life. I don't care what you go through, what you face. I don't care what the devil throws at you. And I'll tell you, he's a master manipulator of trying to pull people down. But Paul, he pairs some things here. He talks about death and life and that death nor grave, nothing can separate you from the love of God. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Also principalities and powers. This is in the spiritual realm that we face every day as Christians. Neither angels nor rulers can separate us from the love and the power of our Savior today. There's nothing in the spiritual realm today that has power to remove you, to extract you from the love of Jesus. Also, time, whether present or future, time cannot separate you from the Lord. So therefore today, no matter what comes today, tomorrow, none of those things can separate you from the love of Christ. And then the universe, he talks about height and depth. So this means that the full expanse of all creation from the core of the earth to the very fairest corners of the galaxy today, nothing can separate you from the love that is found in Christ Jesus today. And also everything, power or created thing, none of those things can separate you from the love of Christ. So after reading this, you should have a great confidence in what God's Word says. And I encourage you to read Romans 8. You can lift your head today and you can walk into tomorrow with whatever you're going to face because you have a promise from God that you are more than a conqueror through Him. 
I'm glad today he is all of that and even more. He'll bring you through what you're going through and you can depend on the Lord. He is a present help in time of trouble. Whatever you're in, it's never bigger than our God. Thank you today for tuning in to Viewpoint. I pray the uh, teaching that we had for you today is encouraging. I'd like to encourage you to get on our Facebook page, and especially during this Christmas season, I am giving each week a Christmas admonishment, encouragement, and talking about some things along with uh, topic talk that we do on Wednesday, and also on Wednesday we do Before the Throne. You just never know when I'm going to appear on a live feed. So you really need to go to that Facebook page, Carlton Duck, D-U-C-K, every day to just see what the duck is going to be talking about next. And I hope you can do that. I'd love for you to join us on Facebook page. I'd love for you to join us on our website, AliveGBC.com. And I really would love for you to join us in worship at GBC Gethsemane Baptist Church, 411 Blue Ridge Street is right off of Lakeside Drive, one block up, and we're near the main entrance to the University of Lynchburg. Worship time's 9.30, 11.30, and it's always an awesome time, and especially during this Christmas season, it is just absolutely such a blessing to come into such a beautiful, decorated church to hear that Christmas music and to see the people with a Christmas smile on their face and the preaching of God's word and the programs that we're doing and the excitement. By the way, we're going to have also a virtual Christmas caroling we're going to be doing pretty soon. So I'll keep you posted on that and you can watch that. And it's just going to be amazing. Great things are happening at Gethsemane. We're only missing one thing. You would love for you to come and be a part of it. Come and experience this church. You'll never go in another church like it. It is absolutely amazing what God is doing here. Well, I've so enjoyed being with you today, and I pray that your heart will be blessed. Remember, we're still collecting uh, those baby dolls for little girls and uh, action figures for little boys for the Department of Social Services for the foster children. I know there are a lot of programs going on right now to bless the children. This is one of several, but this one really today puts something in a child's hands. It just doesn't put money in a um, in their program to help out. We are giving them something tangible that that child can cleave to and get a blessing from in a time that they're going through a family difficulties or problems. So you can be a part of that. Cynthia's dolls for dolls, baby dolls for little girls, action figures for little boys. Please get in touch with me if you can help us with that project. And continue to watch this program and what's happening on the live TV, TV and all the other many blessings and especially during this great season of Christmas as we celebrate Jesus. Have yourself a fantastic week and just continue to praise the Lord in all things and to rejoice in his goodness. We're praying for you. We love you. And we thank God for you. And please come see us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. God bless you and Merry Christmas.